Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems and this one seems pretty interesting from what I saw when I installed it so without further ado let's get straight into this. This one is from the user Topic AL in Discord so I must say thank you Zen for sending this in but without further ado let's hop straight into this. So workshop should already be here, subscribe, right here we go, here it is, the Solaris system. So check this out. Okay. Welcome to Solaris System. This system is an alternate version of your solar system, but things here are different. So, can already see a Vulcan there. Okay, so we've got Solaris. This is obviously the sun equivalent. Firstly, in this world, being a planet has little to do with size, but instead with distance. Objects that are close to the sun are considered planets, which sets a permanent limit on the number of planets in the system. Beyond about 32 AU, objects are too far away to be considered planets, even though they still orbit the sun. These bodies are referred to as outermost solar bodies, or OSBs. So, first of the objects, the star itself, the Solaris Sun. The central star of the system is it's very average to temperature, bigger than the ages of the stars in the universe, but it's unknown how many planets are able to remain stable around it. So, same mass and radius as everyone, there you go. Next up we've got Vulcan here, so the hypothetical object that um, was proven not to exist, so here it is. Quite a good looking Vulcan, actually. It's the closest planet to the Sun, it's so close in fact the planet is tidally locked, meaning it can get insanely hot on one side. And, oh yeah, exposing the mantle. Oh, oh. So there you go. Vulcan. Next up we've got Mercury. Little to see here. It's a small rocky planet, one of the smallest in the system. We like it's in the planet Cousin. There's no moons, no atmosphere. So, Merc just Mercury. So then we have Venus. Right. It's charming how interesting this planet really is, especially considering how hostile it is. Venus has a thick atmosphere of carbon dioxide and high temperatures over 450 degrees, making it very hostile to living beings. However, Venus has something very peculiar, a rather large ring system, which has made scientists believe that in the recent past, Venus had a large moon that disintegrated. So, now, so this Venus has a different visual appearance with the ring there. That's different to what we know. Next up, we've got Earth. So how's, how's the alternate Earth reality? So as we can see, it's more flooded than normal. So, Earth, the starting point for humanity, and even though we've set up colonies elsewhere, humans keep a preference to the blue marble. With over 11 billion people living here, so that's more than the present day. I think we passed, what, 8 billion people on Earth um, in the last few years, didn't we? In, in reality. So, there you go. I said, but new, renewable energy is widespread here. Luna is the only orbits the Earth as the only moon. So, we can see pink city lights, or purpley pink city lights, magenta, looking pretty cool. So, renewable energy Earth, it's more flooded though. Okay, then Luna, the moon as we know it, but it has got a moon base on it. Pretty cool. City lights. Nice. So, next up we have got Theia. So this is an alternate reality where Theia found an orbit that didn't collide with Earth. So there it is. Theia is a planet about half the size of Earth, but what makes this one interesting is it's habitable. And even though it has its own intelligent species known as the Feyans, these species evolved separately to Earth and have technological capabilities akin to the 1930s on Earth. Theia also has a small moon called uh, Prasso. But it's also just a small asteroid, so nothing interesting. Okay, there it is. So Theia found a way to exist. It's closer to the Mars orbit than the Earth orbit. It's at 9 degrees, so pretty cool. Uh, then we've got Mars. Looks pretty similar to the way we know it at the moment. It's got lights on it, though. About the same size as Theia. Mars is unfortunately less hospitable than its um, similarly sized brethren with a thin atmosphere of CO2 and a rust surface. However, where Mars lacks in hospitality, it makes up for having three moons, two asteroid moons, Hermes and Demons, and a larger moon called Odin, where humans have settled into the last base structures. Okay. Pretty cool. So Phobos Demos, we got Odin further out. It's the largest of the Martian moons. Pretty cool. Nice. So we've seen a few differences already in this alternate reality. Um, now we're moving on to the outer solar system. So, Hades. Where is that? So before the orbit of Jupiter, so we've got obviously asteroid belt objects here. I'm guessing these are all just the normal, the usual bunch, the series. Yes, they're all, they're all the same. So Hades, what's this? So it's another gas giant, green one. Interesting. Despite the depiction of Hades in mythology, this planet is anything but. Hades is green in colour, which is due to large amounts of organic uh, chlorophyll in the atmosphere, um, whose origin has yet to be confirmed. Hades also has 50 moons, 4 large moons, 10 asteroid moons, and 1 asteroid moon that has not yet been named. But it will now be referred for as Hades uh, XV, so that's 15. What do, you, what do you think this moon should be named as? Ooh, I don't know. It says it's moons. Interesting. Okay. So there's one of the larger moons over here of Hades. Pretty cool. So an extra gas giant between Mars and Jupiter. That would definitely have some gravitational disturbances, but sure. What's its distance? 
was 12 point nine. Uh, no, if I'm looking at the wrong object, I'm just looking at the planet itself. Four AU. Okay, so it takes seven years. So compared to Jupiter, hmm, Jupiter's there, isn't it? So eleven years. Okay. Right. So Jupiter, what's going on over here? Largest planet in the solar system, and has most moons. What is notable on this planet is a great red spot, which has been going for five hundred plus years. The continuation is largely due to an accident in two thousand and fifty-eight, where a large space probes directly fell into the spot and caused the flare-up. Therefore, the spot lives on. Okay. Cool. Obviously, it's got all of its normal moons, but Jupiter's got a bigger ring system than normal. Look at that. Its rings are past the orbit of Io. That's very unusual. It's a very big ring system. Ganymede, Callisto. There you go. Nice. And then we've got all of Jupiter's normal moons. Very cool. Right. Now, I saw this. What's Eris doing there? So, one of the dwarf planets has moved inwards. Interesting. Right. What's going on here? Iris really doesn't seem like it belongs where it is, but Iris is more interesting than meets the eye. As a large moon, Misasa, orbiting it gives us information about the origins of Iris. Due to the interstellar dust particles located here, it was being hypothesized that Iris was a rogue planet that formed in another star system that was ejected and captured by Solaris. Why these uh, dust fragments aren't present in Iris is a mystery, though. Okay. Got the moon there. Pretty cool. Next up, we've got Iris. Is here. Another gas giant. Okay, very colourful. Alright. From the outside, Iris just seems to be a boring white gas giant with nothing interesting going for it. However, under UV light, the planet glows vibrantly with every colour of the rainbow. The name is just a coincidence. Since the planet was discovered in 1729, the seven moons orbiting Iris all seem to be rainbow colour too, and were named off their discovery in 1967. Okay. So they literally are all colour, that's pretty cool. There you go. Nice. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The colours of the rainbow there looking pretty cool. Mm. Nicely done. Okay. Moving on. Now we've got Saturn. So over here. With no ring system. Okay. The second largest planet in the system. No surprise there. Saturn is like Jupiter, not in the size department, but also having an absolutely insane number of moons department. The total number of moons of Saturn is still unknown, but it could be in the hundreds. Alright. Pretty cool. So we got all normal Saturn's moon system there. Next up, we have got Eden over here. So what is this? Okay, so it's so Earth size. When Eden was discovered in 1903, astronomer Gerald Wilson suspected the planet could be a haven for life, where life forms could emerge and thrive before heading elsewhere in the universe. Under his extremely religious observations, the planet was named Eden, and the two accompanying moons were named Adam and Eve. Okay, when they were discovered in 60, or 1962, however, Eden is far more hospitable. Yes, it's similar to Earth, and yes, it does need to have an atmosphere, but it's out of sea, it's lacking oxygen, the planet is no water to speak of, ice form or not, so it's too far away as well. Okay. So there's the moons, Adam and Eve. Okay, cool. Next up, we've got Uranus. So, what's going on with Uranus? So, oh, a lot more moons than normal around Uranus going on by the looks of it. Or is there? I don't know. Where's, where's Miranda? Here's Miranda. No, that's normal. Looks normal for Uranus. Uh, a planet as peculiar as Uranus comes once in a blue moon. I guess once in a blue planet. As this one is indeed blue, Uranus is peculiar due to its 98 degree axial tilt. A feat no other planet in the solar system comes close to, other than maybe Hades. However, uh, Uranus' uh, system is also special as the furthest, as it is the furthest in the solar system that humans have been to, with astronaut Paul Bodgin taking the first solarity step on Oberon in 2164. Pretty cool. So next up, we go into the Kuiper Belt area now. So it's the uh, Neptune regions almost. So we've got Loki first. Discovered by Albin Forgeson in 1719, was believed to be a moon of Uranus at the time, but was later confirmed to be a planet after later observations were made in 1806. The name Loki was given to the planet in 1808, and the next year, a large moon was discovered absorbed in it. The moon was later named Four. Loki is oceans of ice across the surface, but the North Pole is currently liquid due to all the sunlight it is getting and the tidal forces of Four. So there you go, and it's pretty close. Uh, four, there you go. The other moon's even closer there. Okay, nice. Next up, we've got Neptune. Pretty cool. 
Some may call this planet unlucky due to having 30 moons, but Neptune is much more unique than meets the eye. With violent storms in the atmosphere, a dark blue hue, and the furthest moon of any planet, Neptune is a violent gas giant with freezing temperatures colder than anywhere else in the system. Okie dokie. Then we've got Triton. Rather small, in fact, it's the third smallest planet in the entire system. Um, but this icy object holds secrets about the past outermost regions of the solar system. Um, it's believed to be a new, believed to be a moon in Neptune in the past. So it's actually broken away from Neptune. Where is it? There it is. It actually has escaped. So it's currently uh, having a planet sort of status, is it? Okay. There's some more objects beyond Triton. So I'll leave those to explore yourself. But he did send a Google document here with more. So there's two more. From this point onwards, uh, planets are no longer planets. Uh, objects are no longer planets, but are known as the OBSs, as we mentioned earlier. There are lots of them. So Triton somehow gets away with being classed as a planet then. Interesting. Hundreds of thousands are being categorised. So basically all of the dwarf planets we know uh, are just these OB or OSB objects. So the small ones. Cool. So first up we've got OSAC, which is somewhere. Where is it? That's really far away. Look at that. That red one looks like Sedna. So this little guy here, chilling on the edges. So the description for this. This far out world is estimated to be 12 cent the size of Earth, but secrets may lie on its surface. This is due to the colour observed through telescopes. Yellow uh, is mean half the size that sulfur dioxide is located on the surface. Okay. Interesting. So we got Nun Bolu as well. I think that was the other red one. So that's basically the Sedna then? Oh no, Sedna's there. Oh, so there is actually a... There's Sedna's orbit. So this other one here is an even further version of Sedna. It's very red. Look at that. Very, very red. Okay. Cool. So... The furthest Sednoid we found so far. And far out we mean. Measuring the orbit of this world we discovered the epicentre of this planet lies 0 0.27 light years away from the sun. What's even more strange is that through models of the planet based off its light reflection patterns it appears to be almost like Earth in appearance but mirrored. Aside from the lack of water, light and life. So that's all you need to know. I hope you enjoyed exploring this system and it has to offer. Yeah, I did. That was good. I, li I like alternate reality systems and stuff like that. So it's quite cool. But there you go. So there's your lineup. So it's very similar. I mean, the planets visually are very, very similar to what we know. I mean, look, you can see it's kind of just blending the colours together. We've got Jupiter, Saturn, you've got the whiter one, then it goes into the greens, the deeper blue. So pretty interesting. But yeah, I feel like there could have been a bit more customization with some of the objects, though, because a lot of them are literally copy pasters. But uh, yeah, interesting nonetheless with the uh, extra stuff added in. But there you go. But yeah, I was thinking maybe the atmospheres of Earth or Venus may be different. The colours of the gas giants may be a little different. But yeah, nonetheless, still interesting. So, yeah, there we are. Again, massive thank you to the creator of the system, uh, Topic AL, for sending in this system. Hope you guys all enjoyed it as well. I certainly did. And with that all said and done, make sure you guys have all have a great day out there. Stay safe. Let's even go for 150 likes on today's video as well, guys. Subscribe and help us on the journey to 40,000 subscribers. But yeah, with that all said and done, make sure you have a great day, like I said. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.